Hey everyone, what's up? It's Amperbro here, and today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to shoot projectiles at enemies on the screen. Uh, request by Condos. Now, because I don't have any actual projectiles, we're going to be using a chicken. Because why not? And when the chicken hits the foe, it strikes thunder on them. So, this is a pretty simplistic setup. Um, first thing you want to do is you want to create a projectile, you want to set its trigger to parallel. Uh, and you want to set the condition, you want to check the switch box, and make sure you've created a switch called projectile. And select that switch. Now, over in the contents area, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be waiting for 30 frames, and then we're going to turn the switch projectile off. Next thing you want to do is you want to make little tiny entities running around. You want to make sure you name them. Uh, in this case, uh, I have two entities, so I have entity 1 and entity 2. They don't part they don't really do anything. Um, I didn't really set them up to do anything. All you have to do is just kind of wander around. And last but not least, we're going to create a parallel process. Basically, a parallel process is something that happens at all times. Uh, but it doesn't interrupt the movement of the player. So we're going to create a conditional branch and we're going to check and see if the OK button is being pressed down. If it is, we're going to do another conditional branch and we're going to check and see if projectile is off. And if that is, we're going to play a sound uh, that we shot something like a gun. And then we're going to create variables. We need char dir for standard for character direction. We're going to need character X, character Y, or in this case, uh, shortened, the shortened version. Uh, char X, Char Y, Projectile X, Projectile Y, Enemy X, Enemy Y, Enemy 2 X, Enemy 2 Y. You're going to need an Enemy Y and X for each and every single uh, individual enemy. Now, uh, once you've done that, we're going to uh, we're going to set the Char Dir equal to the direction of the player, which means the, uh, the direction that the player is facing. Then we're going to set Char X equal to Game Data Map X of Player, and set Y equal to the Map Y of Player. Um, now we're going to do a conditional branch and we're going to check and see if char dir uh, is equal to 8, which means if he is facing up. You don't want to use if the, you, you don't want to use the, um, the conditional branch that says the character is facing a certain direction, because if you do, when you turn around, the chicken will also change direction, and you do not want that. So we want to initialize the direction only once. Anywho, if it's if he's facing up, which is 8, we are going to subtract character Y by 1, placing the chicken directly above the um, player. Then we're, next, we're going to set event location. We're going to select projectile. We're going to uh, set designa uh, designation with variables, and we're going to select char X and char Y for the X and Y position. Next, we're going to turn the chicken and make him face upward. And then we're going to do the same thing for the rest here. Um, you can see the pattern here. Uh, 6 is right, uh, so we're going to increase X by 1 instead of Y. 4 is left, so we're going to decrease X by 1. And 2 is down, so we're going to increase Y by 1. And so on and so forth. You see the pattern. Next, we're going to turn the projectile switch on. After all that, we're going to create another conditional branch to check and see if it's on. Uh, you could have done else, I guess, but oh well. Now we're going to create a loop. Um, loops are interesting because it forces everything to happen within a single frame. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be checking the character's directions again. Uh, as you can see, the same similar pattern. But this time we're um, in the set move route, we're going to move the uh, chicken in the direction that the character was initialized or that the character was initially facing when the chicken was created. So if eight, he moves up. If six, he moves right. 4, he moves left, 2, he moves down. Next, we're going to go ahead and set projectile X equal to the map X of the projectile by doing the same uh, same way we did with the player. And we're going to do the same thing for enemy X and enemy Y. Now, we're going to do a conditional branch to check and see if, uh, um, if projectile X is equal to enemy X. Then, we're going to do a conditional branch to check and see if projectile Y is equal to um, enemy Y. And if it is... We play an animation on Entity 1, um, and then we turn him transparent, and then we move him somewhere on the map. Next, we do the same thing, um, with, but this time we're going to select Enemy 2. Uh, make sure you select Entity 2 as well. Uh, you make sure you change the variables and the entity uh, tied to that variable. And we're going to do the exact same thing, but again, make sure you're using the second version of these variables and um, entities. After that, you're going to do a break loop, and it'll automatically repeat everything above, and once you've done that, you are done. 
you now have a mighty chicken that smites down foes. So see you guys later. Thank you all so much for watching. Peace out.